your listing sales are down, but where do you begin? Where do you start to try and figure out why are my sales down? My name is Stephen Pope and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm gonna give you a tutorial with a bunch of the troubleshooting tips that I recommend to figure out why your sales are down. All right, so this is one of my listings. It's a Mama Shark wine glass. And I've been selling this for probably close to two, maybe a little bit longer years. And you can see I've had a really good time selling it. 1,700 reviews, 4.8 out of five star reviews, which uh, averages up to five. Once you're at 4.8, it rounds up to five. And, and I've had a really good time selling this. I've made an incredible amount of money selling this product. Well, unfortunately, sales have fallen off a cliff. And there's a variety of reasons for that. There's some macro stuff like the economy sucks right now and 87% of people think the economy's fair or poor and nobody has money to buy a $15 wine glass. All of those things are facts. But no matter what your item is, no matter what the economy is doing, there are usually very specific reasons why your specific ASIN went down, why your specific ASIN sales have gone off the cliff. So I'm gonna walk you through some of the things that I do to try and figure this out. So first thing I do when I'm looking at a product is I will go down and I'll look at some of the, the history, right? So you can use a tool like Helium 10 here and basically X-ray some of the history. So I have been trying to recover sales on this listing for some time. I actually lowered the price down all the way down to $6.99 in the first week of April. Now it's at $9.99 where I've stayed here. And notice, you see the blue chart, doesn't really affect it. So it's not price that's causing the problem. And this is something you can quickly rule out by testing price on your side. You can get a little bit of a longer view here and you can basically see, I maintained this price at $14.99 for a very long time. Back in April 18th, this is one year ago in 2021, I was with a sales rank of the top 5,000 in the entire home and goods. So this product was just going off the shelves like crazy, right? And it didn't do as well this Christmas season, but two years ago it did even better. So if we go out from an even farther macro view, you can see, boom, man, since 2019, I've, I've had a basically a top 5,000 product. And then as you can see, kind of the death, the death, uh, I don't know what we'll call this, the death mountain, something like that. The mountain is going up, right? And that's not the chart you want to see, okay? Um, so these are some of the things I, I do. So one of the things you can do next, so if, if the first thing to do is kind of look at the data from a long view, the next thing you could do is go look at the product inside of the inventory page. Right next to the status icon, does it say active? If it doesn't, then you know your problem immediately, right? If it's inactive, if there's a problem with the products, you know what the issue is. Since that's not the issue here, there's nothing to troubleshoot. If you do have an inactive product, you can look at some of my videos. Just Google my Amazon guy stranded inventory, my Amazon guy, um, whatever the problem might be. And you'll see all kinds of, of tips and tricks that I share on this concept. So it's not an inactive product, but let's just go ahead and rule out whether there's a hidden suppression. So what you do to figure out whether you have a hidden suppression is go to the home page of Amazon. Can't do this from a kit category page. Go to the home page of Amazon, type in the ASIN, does it come up? And in my case, it does. So there's no problem there, right? The product shows up. Okay, so it's not an issue of an inactive product. It's not stranded, it's not the price, and it's not a hidden suppression. We've ruled all these things out. What about inventory? Is there a, an issue with the inventory? So, well, it says 665 available, but what does that really look like? Click it. This is the one that caught me by surprise today. I did a coaching call with a gentleman, went through all of these troubleshooting steps, and here is the one that I missed. I did not click on the available inventory. And after the call, we were dialoguing. I felt like I didn't, I didn't feel like I had, I mean, I felt like I knew what the problem was. I knew that there was an issue, the search term rankings had been lost, but I didn't check this specific thing. And lo and behold, the issue for this gentleman was uh, his inventory was stuck in FC transfer. And FC transfer often can show up in reserved, it can show up in, in FC transfer, and anything that is in FC transfer is not shippable via Prime. They, they may put it on the listing and say, hey, this is not available for seven days, 
This is not a prime badge item. And so if that is you, if your inventory has either A, stocked out, or B, uh, is an FC transfer or is inbound, um, there's a program called uh, the In Stock Get Started program, something to that effect. And what they do is they'll keep your, your inventory live, almost like a pre-buy or a pre-sell, and you can buy it before it gets to Amazon, or you can buy it before it's fully checked in. And so if that happens to you and you don't have a Prime badge, there is your answer. That's why your sales are down. And that could affect you. Um, 50% of your sales could just be gone, just like that. What is the top rule in all of Amazon? Do not stock out. What's the second rule? It's kind of like the first. It's don't stock out. And the third rule is like the first two, never stock out. If you stock out, that is the cardinal sin of Amazon. And there's a big reason for that. It's because it destroys your SEO, it destroys your ranking, and Amazon deprioritizes your listing in search results. So don't stock out. All right, so that's kind of the inventory things you can check and see. The next thing you could do is go ahead and click on edit on the item. Are there any red flags that show up? Is there a red flag on offer page, vital info, images, description, keywords, more details, anything like that? Um, more often than not, the red flag is just something super basic. You got to fill in an attribute or something, and that's probably not the problem. But it's always good to check. Click on edit, see if that's the problem on the listing. The next thing I would do from the inventory page, from right here, you can click on the SKU icon like this, and that will load up this. This is very similar to that data that we were looking at um, back on the main page over on the Mama Shark page right here, kind of in this keyword section where X-Ray will pop up. Um, but this is actual data from Seller Central, not from a tool, and it can be very valuable. So in the last seven days, I've sold three units. Now, mind you, this used to be a top 5,000 product on all of home, and so I'm super overstocked. I have 600 of these. You can see that on my inventory page, 665 of these, so I'm way overstocked. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping that Mother's Day will magically come through and clean these out for me. I don't want to hold my breath because I know what's actually wrong with the listing and I'll reveal that here shortly. Um, but I really would like to get out of my, my stock position here uh, because there's thousands of dollars in dead stock. Like this is a dead, dead product. It's not going to be revitalized. Um, and so sometimes when you've had a product that's done so well for years, it's really hard to give up the product. Very, very difficult, uh, especially since, you know, sometimes you have products on autopilot. This was absolutely an auto product product for me where I made money and did very little to help it out. Um, all right. So, so you can see here, look at the trend lines. You can see all the sales, the sales rank over time and, and everything that's involved in that kind of similar to the, the one we showed before. You can scroll down and look at to see if there's any issues with the inventory. I've got excess inventory, I've got excess days of supply. I've got problems pretty much galore everywhere. Um, I can look at the Amazon fees here, and I can also see the inbound quantities at the very bottom. Now, there's nothing there really to double check there or anything like that, um, but that gives you an idea of some of the other things that factor into the listing. The next thing you want to do is go pop your product over into Helium 10. Now, if you have previously been tracking your keywords, you'd want to go into the tools dropdown and go to keyword tracker. The more data that you can see over time uh, when an item was doing well versus not well, the better. If you haven't been doing the keyword tracker, you can instead load Cerebro and just look at your keyword rankings. This is definitely not the better of the two options though because in the keyword tracker, you can find a very specific keyword of high volume. And if you were dropping off, say you were in rank number one for a year, and then all of a sudden you're rank 100, you would find that that's the problem. You've lost keyword rankings. And keyword rankings can be lost if conversion goes down or if a variety of other factors that we've already discussed. All right, so I'm gonna first show you what the keyword tracker looks like. And when you go in, you go to the tools, the drop down, keyword tracker, pop this up. You can type in a keyword like this to find the product. Click on the product. You can see all the variations included in this tracking. Uh, and then you can actually click on the product image to show the keyword. It's a little tricky. Uh, in here, we can then sort this by a variety of things. We could, we could look at the search volume like this and sort it by top to bottom. So... Um, because this is a parentage, I do have keywords that are not specific just to 
the Mama Shark product. I also have the Grandma Shark product and some of the others. But we can look here. Here is one key. There's 12 keywords in this control F that we find that are specific for the Mama Shark. And so in here, we could take a look at this product, right? So good gifts for mom. It's a 657 trend line. You can do, you can see like how the trend line does. And so you can see here, 25,000 volume back in December. Uh, but as we get to the May timeframe, it doesn't, doesn't peak as much during Mother's Day as it does in, in terms of uh, the Christmas timeframe. So, but let's just roll with this one. So if we look at the keyword over time here, uh, and you can go to the one year, the all time, right? So back in the day, I had a top 20 product, uh, just, uh, told my cameo kids to exit. <laughs> so we look at the keyword traffic over time. We can see that this keyword, I was a top 10 was a top 20 did pretty good. And then over time, Oh, October, not so good. And then it recovered and then, Oh, oh my gosh, what happened here in April 20th of 2021 recovered. And then here we're starting to actually de-index. When you see the rank disappear, that means it's de-indexed. Uh, and now we're averaging the 200s, right? So like this keyword is no longer producing for this product. Like it's a great case example of when a product previously had really good ranks. We were in the top there. We were ranked nine, it looks like in its heyday. And now we're lucky to be in the top 260, right? So that's, a, that's the death spiral of a keyword. Let's just look at another one. Let's see if we can find another good one here. Gift for single mom. That's kind of a little weak. Young mom gifts. Gift for mom after giving birth. Eh. Mama shark needs a drink, right? Okay, so here, here is a perfect keyword that I should be like rank one for. Let's see how I'm doing. All right. So in the last 30 days, I'm ranked 20. So that means there's a lot of other products that are doing better than me. Let's go to the 90-day view. So pretty static overall, kind of in that average of the, the, the mid-20s. Let's go to year one though. Looks like I've been static for a full year on this with the two kind of random outliers right there. And this keyword did a lot better, stuck around a lot better, but I was in the top 10. Uh, looks like number 10 was kind of the peak about a year ago in July on that particular keyword. So this is a great way to go in and look at the keyword rankings to say like, okay, what is going on? Is it up, is it down? What are the trend lines? You can see, kind of a little chart here of when things go up or down uh, and whatnot. Little plug for Helium 10. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for them yet, you can get 50% off your first month. Just go to myamazonguy.com slash H10 and you can get the discount code by clicking on this button right here. Uh, we use them for profit tracking. We use them for keyword ranking tracking and inventory suggestions and, and quite frankly, the alerts, pretty good. Um, all right, so Next, after you've done the keyword tracking analysis, the next thing to do is to go to the advertising. And you'll notice here, last 65 days, I have a goose egg on the spend. And that is because, drum roll, Amazon banned my product from ads. Again, another one, right? So many of you guys might remember that I have another product that I talked extensively about. It was my... Uh, I'm not drinking alone, I'm social distancing. This single product here has made me more money than any product ever before. This product also got banned from ads in February of 2021. My mama shark and my sharks got banned about two to two and a half months ago from ads for the very same reason, the word drink. If you have the word drink or drinking on a wine glass, they eventually ban you from ads. It's a very depressing thing considering, obviously you can use this wine glass for whatever you want. You can use it for water. I don't even drink. That's the biggest irony of this whole situation. But all of these campaigns that I had built out here on the back end, zero impressions coming through. It looks like we got uh, one particular keyword campaign still has 17 impressions. Thank, thanks, Amazon. 17 impressions. Really, really nice of you. Um, and so that's the problem. But if you look at the lifetime on this particular product, right? And, and I, this is for all my products that actually have the ASIN in, in the campaign filtered name. Uh, t about 3,000 in ad spend, 5,000 in sales specifically on this with an A cost of 59%. And some obviously did a lot better than others. You can see down here, the, the, the display advertising did terrible. We turned that one off. But this is the depressing fact. Amazon on occasion will come in and ban products from advertising. Now, if you're worried or if you're wondering, has my product been banned from ads? 
the best indicator of this is if you are getting no impressions. So when you look at the data here and you can see the last time we had clicks, go back in time, you can see eventually it zeroes out and it's no longer getting advertising. When a product is banned from advertising, the SEO gets devastated. And some of our charts kind of go in line or congruent with each other. When a product is banned from advertising, you can't organically rank as well because in the A9 algorithm update, and I'll pull that up on screen, here is the SEO factors back in 2021. Um, I gave um, kind of my patch notes for this where I thought organic sales less important, uh, but the reviews are less important. And that's that's because Amazon's been cracking down on review gen. But PPC sales, I gave, I gave a, a, a buff to in the patch notes of Amazon's SEO. And that's because I have personally witnessed the effect of not having PPC and how that harms a, a product's SEO. And it's dramatic. It's very, very dramatic. And so if you have a product that's banned from advertising, it is extraordinarily difficult to succeed with or have any hope of maintaining the product. So when this happens, I discontinue the product. I say, boy, my gosh, you're gone. Next product in queue. And I try not to replicate the same mistake twice. I'm probably never going to launch another glass that has the word drink or drinking on it because Amazon's policies eventually come around and they ban me from ads. It's depressing, but it's a fact. All right. I love troubleshooting products. If you have a product that you're just like, why are my sales down? Maybe you felt like I didn't cover a particular topic area on how to troubleshoot something. Leave it in the comments section. I'm happy to make more video content and whatnot on these topics. We also have same day coaching available. You can hire me same day appointment. Just book with Steven right there. Uh, we also have various different coaches, even in Spanish with Francisco ads with Matt. Jason does all our vendor central stuff. And Shaman, he does a lot of our troubleshooting like I do. So you have a lot of resources here. Check us out. We have a bunch of things. You can even write a question to me for 50 bucks. Maybe you don't have enough to do a full phone call, but you can show me a listing. I can do a little research for you. Check out all our testimonials. We've helped people like Adam Heist. Uh, video after video after video testimonial. Book your coaching call today at myamazonguy.com slash coaching. Thanks for watching.